Coordination of Jobs and Tasks, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tara Barrett. Okay, thanks. So I'm going to be talking about automation, and to be honest, I wish I automated this talk. <laughs> I think it wouldn't be that difficult. Now, when most people think about automation, of course, like Doug said, they think about robots stealing their jobs. And we think of this picture in particular from Brian Osborne in 2013 that warned us all that 47% of jobs were at risk of being automated in the very near future, especially in certain sectors like service and like manufacturing. And so this, of course, put everyone in panic. The World Bank in 2016 piled on, saying that certain cities were more at risk. Um, places like Las Vegas had 50% risk, and certain countries were at risk. China was at 77% risk. Um, so this was generating a lot of fear. Uh, we saw headlines like, a job's right for automation, and workers threatened by automation shift their skills to become drivers, and 13 ways automation might impact jobs in the near future. Um, so everyone was, of course, very afraid and very concerned that robots would take their jobs. One argument I want to make for you, though, is that this is not a new story. As early as the 1920s, we saw headlines like this one that say, March of the Machine makes my idle hands. Um, or going forward to the 1940s, we see fears like automation in Britain stirs unrest. Automation might end most unskilled jobs in 10 years. Automation linked to job discount. Does the machine displace man in the, in the long run? A little sexist, but. Uh, <laughs> so we're getting uh, more and more concerned. In the 60s, technology is a threat to 5 million jobs. A robot might be after your job. Again, this is in the 1960s where we're having these fears. Uh, Nobel laureate Herbert Simon, writing at this time, made a very important point, though. And that point is that economic institutions, not technological institutions, determine unemployment that we decide what work is valuable and how we want to contribute to society. That we shouldn't be afraid of technology stealing our jobs. I think Doug made that point very nicely. Uh, I tend to agree with Byron Agust from Opportunity at Work who says, we'll only run out of jobs if the world runs out of problems to solve. That humans are innovative and creative and we find ways to contribute to society um, as the world changes around us. That we shouldn't fear technology. Luckily, Eric Vinyasson agrees with me um, so in a, in a recent paper, he took on this analysis of Brian Osborne to ask a question about which things could actually be automated by machine learning in the near future, um, using ONET, by the way. Uh, and he concluded that very few jobs actually have, have a set of tasks that are entirely automatable. That while every job can be partially automated, very few jobs are at risk of um, being fully automated. Uh, the, driver, the job of driver is a great example of this. What we can say then is the automation doesn't kill jobs, but it does make them more complicated. So this is a robotic welder. In order to operate it, you have to know about welding, and you have to know about robotics and computer science. So the job of welder has changed quite a bit. Um, this presents some opportunities for IS ecologists. The first opportunity is in job redesign. This is a McDonald's where the cashier function has been automated. So the cashiers instead bring the food to the customer's table and provide a higher level of service. Uh, we also have opportunities related to um, helping people work with automation. So if we think about algorithms and robots as our coworkers, what does that mean for how we um, support people in this role? Current events inform this question, I think, fairly profoundly. Uh, the analysis of the Boeing crashes recently suggested that it was partially related to pilots being surprised by the automated safety features on the planes. And so what can we do to ensure that doesn't happen again? There are very clear uh, training and selection implications of that. So we can ask, what does it mean to work with a robot? What does it mean to work with an algorithm? How do we support people? How do we find people that can do this well? Uh, we can also ask, who resists automation? So uh, maybe people who are afraid of technology, maybe people who are overconfident, or maybe people who have true expertise and are applying that expertise correctly to overrule an incorrect decision, and people need to have the judgment to figure out which of those two things is happening. The third opportunity has to do with thinking about what makes work meaningful for people. It's possible that things that are not easily automated will take on more meaning, like inspiring people, creating beauty in the world, and forming relationships. Um, our fourth opportunity, though, has to do with being a bridge to the education community helping them think about which skills will be needed in the future. Speaking of bridges, this is a bridge built by 3D printing robots, um, and none of the people involved knew anything formally about robots, or about welding, or about 3D printing. They learned it on the fly. 
Um, so in conclusion, we should not worry about robots taking our jobs, um, but we should absolutely think about how to support people in working together with automation. Thank you.